Greetings everyone, this is Ramon from redzone.ca and uh, a package has arrived today. So uh, I've ordered these, these are GameCube mod chips that are intended for um, to, a follow up to that um, video that uh, Chris made where he attempted to put a Xeno GC on a GameCube and uh, that didn't turn out pretty well. Uh, if you haven't seen that, um, I recommend that you check out the video that I'll probably put a snippet here, but you can just find it in our channel. It's about modding the GameCube to accept a Xeno GC so we can actually boot uh, um, back up. So I've ordered a new set because we think those old mod chips, uh, they appear to be either fake or just not very high quality. So um, I've ordered this new set of mod chips from um, uh, Etsy of all places. So um, I'll probably put it on the screen to see, you know, where they actually came from and whatever. It's a seller called Game Duck, and he sells a whole bunch of nifty stuff like uh, cartridge shells, um, you know, lots of retro gaming uh, goodness. So um, I've ordered these. Um, I ordered these around maybe three weeks ago, that's indicated by that date, so right now we're gonna open this up and see what we get. Because I'm hoping with this one it'll be, you know, high quality enough that it may actually work. So uh, here's the back of the package. Okay, let's just open this up and uh, see what we get. Nice little tear down over here, isn't it? It's a really high tech. Okay, so let's see what we get in the package. Ooh, very nice um, mini DVDs. Seems to be. What is this? It ben. <laughs> it says Banana Digital. DVDR 1.4 gigs. So they seem to be pretty good. This one I'm seeing. I don't see any scratches or anything. So let's see here. And ooh, here's our precious uh, Xeno GC. So I'm hoping these ones are not like the ones that um, Chris got from like, I think it was like AliExpress or Alibaba. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to check up with him. So, so let's make sure that we're not missing anything. But otherwise, seems to be, seems to be pretty much what I ordered. I got a couple of them. There's the, um, the circuit board. You know, nothing fancy. It's open source after all. So, uh, so let me just put this right here and here in a nice little package. So here are the um, here's the mod chips, and here are the new brand new boot discs. So because we weren't sure if the boot discs even work, so um, you know if those ended up ended up working, I guess we got an extra. So this is my part of the video done. So back to you, Chris. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Red Zone. I'm doing a follow-up video to the GameCube mod chip. Uh, it's funny how every time I want to do one of these videos, the dogs start barking. It's like, it's like they know. So I still have the old mod chip in here that didn't work. I do see that when I fire up the GameCube, the mod chip stays red. I thought maybe since I got these mod chips off AliExpress that these may be bunk chips. But the fact that the red light came on may indicate that I may have screwed up with the wiring. So these mod chips are designed to be soldered directly to the board. I opted to go with wires this time in case something didn't go, which in this case it did not. It's absolutely amazing how many screws are in these tiny game cubes. I 
I know it would be easier with an electric screwdriver, but I would worry about stripping out the plastic. Uh-oh, where did that go? Oh yeah, I see it. Come on. Come on. I'll just shake it out later. Okay, this isn't the right screwdriver. This is my lucky screwdriver. I've had it for years, but it just doesn't have the right tip on it. Seriously, you're not gonna, there we go. <laughs> okay, where did that come from? <laughs> Fell out the bottom, okay. Cool. Okay, now I just gotta remember how to take you off. And now there are these tiny little screws I gotta take off. And then even more screws after that. So a while back I picked up a couple of game cubes off a friend of mine I work with and uh oop. he said I'll give you two game cubes for the price of one. He said there is a catch with the second GameCube. I said, what's that? He was going to do a custom camel paint color scheme on the GameCube. So he took all the labels off it and took it to bits. So basically he handed me a big Ziploc bag that had many, many Ziploc bags and a disassembled GameCube. So I had the fun of trying to figure out what went where and I actually got the GameCube assembled and it actually worked on the first shot. There were a couple of brackets on the bottom which the Game Boy player screws into that I missed. Completely understandable. So I had to take it down and those are on in the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that or not but there's like a little, little brass ones in here in the corners and that's where the Game Boy player because I put it all together and I had these four brass brass bleh, brass brackets left over and I hadn't a hot clue where they came from so I just had a look at my assembled GameCube and I could see them on the bottom so so I had to take it all to bits again just to put those four things in but since I knew how to do it it was much quicker the second time. And that GameCube works perfectly. I just have to get some uh, adhesive and reapply the labels. The only thing that's missing, which kind of irks me a little bit, is the ATI sticker on the front. I do not have that. But the other GameCube I got, which was completely assembled, uh, which is the Indigo one, By the way, this is not that GameCube I assembled. This is a different GameCube. This actually belongs to Ramon of Red Zone. We have been trying to find mod chips for these to work. I still think, well, these mod chips came from AliExpress and I still think they're bunk. But I have a diagram here. I'm gonna double check my wiring. See, I think the wiring is okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm just gonna get my continuity tester out here. Make sure none of these are shorted on each other. I don't think they are because they do get power. Yeah. Yeah. So let's 
let's try continuity from here to here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, let's try some continuity here. That was me just testing. Oh. Oh. Power. What would that be? A. Those shouldn't be touching, that's good. Well, they are, these two are talking to each other, but I don't think, I think that's by design, because it's not through any fault of mine that I can tell. Because these wires are, that must be the way the board is. Must be the way the board is designed. Okay, so. Looks fine to me. Okay, B. So B is yellow. B should be. Ah. I think I've found the issue. Let me just see. B is supposed to go. Okay, so I have these two wires mixed up. I have B and A mixed up. Future me will throw up the diagram I'm looking at here, so... Yes, I have screwed up B and A. Okay, let me just double check that. So B is supposed to go... Yeah, I've got B and A mixed up. Okay. Cool. That is an easy fix. So what I've done is... I have swapped the yellow wire and the orange wire. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but uh, this should work now. Let's test it out. Okay, back to handheld mode here. So we're going to fire this up and see what we get. Hmm. Looks to me about the same stuff. Absolutely nothing. This is the boot disk that we got from AliExpress. I'm gonna try the boot disk from the second mod chip that we bought. Because I have no way of verifying whether these boot disks actually work or not. Oh, finger in the way. got reversed uh, still doesn't do jack shit okay so I was unsuccessful with swapping the wires uh, things took a turn from the worst it won't boot any discs now even legitimate ones so like I said these are the Aliexpress mod chips so I'm going to desolder this Aliexpress mod chip and put in one that we ordered from a website on the UK in the UK rather and hope that that works so just not having any luck modding these things at all
Actually, these wires came out of a uh, a Nintendo that I got from somebody. I used the shell of an, a dead Nintendo to make a Raspberry Pi, Pi Tendo, as I call it. So these are the wires that would go from the motherboard to the controller. So they're Nintendo wires. So I mean, let's just double check here. So red wire is red wire is G. So G. Is supposed to go here. Sorry, blue wire. My bad. Blue wire goes there. Red wire, which is D, goes there. Purple wire, which is power, goes from there to there. Okay, that's good. White wire is C. And that's supposed to go to that pad there. All good. And then B. That's B. Okay, that's all good. And then A. And then A. Okay, so I've got this wired up. Alright. Let's uh, throw this together and uh, give it a shot. See what we get. Okay, I just did a test here, and it's exactly the same deal. It doesn't read anything now. I'm getting the blinking red light that is supposed to happen, and then I'm getting the green light. Well, in this case, it looks like an amber light. And according to all the documentation I've read on that, it should be working, but it does not read anything. So I, I am at a loss. I am at a complete loss. I don't know why these aren't working. I... So I'm just going to disable the mod chip by removing the power wire. And I don't know, I'll, I'll do some more Googling. Maybe I can find someone else that's having the same issue. But for now, this is another failure on my part. So I'll post pictures. Uh, future me will post some pictures as to what the mod chip installation looks like compared to the documentation. And I've gone over this 10 times and I can't, I cannot see anything wrong with it. I found those two wires were reversed. I put them the way they're supposed to be according to this diagram I found on the internet. Okay, so I had to tweak the laser pot on the GameCube laser. I had to set it to, originally it was 250 ohms. I had to reduce it down to 180 ohms, and now, got my Swiss boot disc in here, oh, sorry about the fingers, it's kind of hard to hold a phone and do this at the same time, and fire this guy up here, I knew it started working because I could read legit discs, and now these boot discs work great. And there we have it. 
Now I'll have to figure out how to use this program and with our SD card adapter and uh, see what we get here. I will, when I take this apart one more time to put it back together, I will show you the pot that I had to adjust. And I highly recommend that you use a multimeter when you do it, because if you set the power too high, you'll burn out your laser, so. Okay, so now that I actually have this working, I just wanted to show you uh, what I adjusted here. I don't have my lavalier mic plugged in, so I'm just using the microphones on the camera. Um, I hope this is coming through. I'm trying to reduce the glare from the lights. So there is a variable resistor, also known as a potential meter, right here. And what you need to do is uh, you twist it to the left. And you have to twist it ever so slightly, like I'm talking like 0.25 of a millimeter. So you give it a little twist and then you have to test it with the multimeter. So you have to get it between 150, well, not in between, but the lowest you can safely go from what I've read online is 150 ohms. Anything beyond that, you risk burning out your lasers. So when I initially tested this, sorry, allergies are affecting my voice. Um, it was originally at 249. And then I reduced it to 203, so I was doing just small increments. And I got it down to 181 ohms, and then it started reading my legitimate disc as well as the Swiss boot disc. So I stopped there, because I don't want to risk burning out the laser. Because this is not actually my GameCube, so burning out the laser on this would feel even worse, because I don't own it. So again, there are two pads here very tiny you'll have to have a decent multimeter there's a pad here and a pad here so you want to do the l lower right one and then there's a single pad on this side and that will give you your ohms now depending on your multimeter you might have to hold it there for a few seconds to get a reading because it'll fluctuate depending on how good of a, a connection you've made so so there you have it now, I can attempt to install this guy. This is the, what the heck is this thing called? This is the SD2SP2 SD card adapter. So, I've never used one of these before. It's very simple. I mean, there's not much to it. It's about, it's some traces. Um, I see one, it's either, it looks like that. It looks like a surface mount capacitor and an SD card interface. There's nothing else on here, so you do have to have a GameCube that has the small serial port on it, which are the early to launch GameCubes. I have two GameCubes. I have an Indigo GameCube and I have a black one. The black one doesn't have the digital port and it doesn't have this serial port, but the other black one I have, sorry, the Indigo one I have, I haven't had enough caffeine this morning. The Indigo one I have has the digital port and this serial port. So I'm not sure if the digital port indicates whether or not it has this or not because I guess they removed the digital port and the serial port to reduce the cost of manufacture near the end of the GameCube's life. So, so there you have it. Um, there are lots of other good guides on the, on the YouTubes. Um, don't use me as a guide. I'm not making this as a guide video. I'm just making this as a uh, what I had to go through to get this working. I was feeling like a big failure there for a while because I thought I thought I was you know I was an idiot and couldn't get this working. Then I figured out that I accidentally had reversed these two wires here. Now online it says that when you fire this up, it has a, a it blinks a red light twice and then it goes to green. What had me confused with this mod chip, and this is an actual Xeno GC, it's not this, the, the Zen 8 one. So I got the two two blinky reds, and then I got an orange. So I figured I screwed up, but apparently these either ship with a green or an orange. So yeah, I'm glad I got this working. I will have to uh, read some guides online to see how to actually use Swiss and uh, try and boot some backups. Thank <laughs> you.